refining. After obtaining the crude metals, we know it contains a lot of impurities. Impurities can be in the form of flux, like the slag which is actually hasn't been separated out completely, flux which has been added, which they are also left out, and the unreduced the metal uh, oxides can be there, or the gang particles can also be there. Along with this, there, lot, there can be a lot of volatile impurities like phosphorus, arsenic, antimony, uh, like this. Now, all these has to be removed in order to obtain pure 100% or almost 99.99% pure metal. Now, therefore, different techniques are used to refine them, to purify them. Now, those techniques mainly depends on basically the properties of the impurities which are present along with the metal or it depends on the properties of the metal. So we use mainly different techniques like uh, the first one I can list out is, is distillation. Now distillation is mainly used for those metals which are actually are metals are volatile. Now what happens is the impure metal is heated, it becomes it, 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 it heated above its boiling point so it gets changed into their vapors. Those vapors are separated out and condensed to give you pure metal. And therefore, it is mainly used for metals like zinc, cadmium and mercury, which are volatile. Second method, which is called liquation. Liquation or liquefaction, it is mainly done for the metals like tin, lead, bismuth, etc. Now in these metals what we find is their melting points are very low. So they are heated on a, on a, on a furnace, uh, furnaces which is having a hot or a slopey surfaces. Now what happens is when these metals are heated above their melting points, they easily actually melts, melts down uh, to give you the pure, pure metals and the, all the impurities uh, which remains in the solid, the solid state, they get sep easily separated out. So it's mainly used when we find that the metals melting point is lesser than the impurities melting point which are mainly uh, taking place in case of lead, uh, tin, lead, or bismuth, etc. Then we can have the example of electrolytic refining. Now, electrolytic refining, yes, it can be used for or the reactive metals, it can be used for uh, precious metals and can be used for copper. The example which has been explained to you in the, uh, the slavers is your copper sulphate. We know this that has again been taken in case of your electrochemistry. Like in copper sulphate, we know uh, once it is taken, it will dissociate into copper ions and sulphate ions. So what we do is we take this copper sulphate as the electrolyte. Then in the case uh, in the electrolytic furnace, uh, electrolytic vessel, what we do is we take uh, this is negative, this is positive. So what, no, what, what we know this is your is anode, this is your is cathode. Now we know what we do is we take anode as your impure copper or blister copper in which what happens is copper itself gets oxidized. Now this electrolyte is this is this is copper which is impure. This electrolyte is already having copper ions. Now there the cathode is taken as pure copper where this copper ions goes accepts electrons and gets reduced. So therefore what we find is the size of this anode will, will go on decreasing and the size of the cathode will increase because more and more copper will get deposited on it. So in this way what we find is all the copper, uh, copper uh, the, uh, which is taken in the impure copper which is taken in the form of anode dissolves into the electrolyte and gets what reduced further to add the cathode. So this is how we are able to get pure cathode rods and all the impurities they settle down at the bottom of this anode and they are called anode mud. So this is electrolytic way of refining the metals. The next method for refining is a zone refining.
Now zone refining is mainly used for the metalloids like germanium etc. That is based on the principle that the imp when impure, met impure metal is melted, the impurities remains in the uh, liquid state and the pure metal crystallizes out. So impurities prefers to remain in the liquid state and the pure metal crystallizes out. So that is why when this impure germanium is taken in the form of a rod and actually it is passed from an induction coil which is heated, then what happens is and it is actually this induction coil is slided over this, this impure germanium rod. So when this is moved to side along because of this heat, the impure germanium also gets melted and as it moves further, the liquid state of the germanium moves along with this. Now therefore all the reduce, all the uh, uh, impu impurities which, which prefers to be in this liquid state, they also moves along with it to the one corner and the pure metal starts crystallizing out. So this is done two, three times and at the end what we do is all impurities gets collected at one end and they are this end is cut down and we get a pure germanium rod. This gives a very high percentage of pure metal like germanium, uh, metalloids like germanium. So percentage purity obtained by this method is very, very high. There is another method which is called vapor phase refining. Now vapor phase refining as see the name suggests the impure metal is reacted with certain specific reagents which converts them into a volatile compounds so that they doesn't react with the impurities so all the impurities remains there as such. Now metal is taken out in the form of a volatile compound which is taken to a further still higher temperature and there it is decomposed to give you the pure metal. The best examples to explain in this are Mond's process. Now if this Mond's process is used for nickel. Now nickel first, this impure nickel is heated with carbon monoxide around 50 to 80 degrees Celsius. This gives a complex called tetracarbonyl nickel. Now this is the volatile complex which is easily separated out. Now this nickel tetracarbonyl nickel is decomposed at around 180 degrees Celsius which gives you what? This pure nickel back. So this is process of converting an impure metal to its vape, to its volatile compound which is actually by, by making it to react with certain specific species which those compounds are taken at a higher temperature decomposed to give you the pure metal. It's called vapor phase refining and this particular example of nickel is called Mond's process. There is one more process in this more example sorry in this which is called Van Arkel method. Now this Van Arkel method is used for zirconium or it is used for titanium. Now in this case in the titanium is heated with iodine, it gives you titanium tetraiodide. Now this titanium tetraiodide is taken at around 1800 Kelvin on tungsten filament where it decomposes to give you pure titanium back. So it can be used for zirconium, it can be used for titanium in the very similar reactions and this is how we can do what the refining of that metals like titanium and zirconium. Another method discussed in the refining of metals is, is called chromatography method. Now in this chromatography method, what exactly is the chromatography first one need to understand this. It is the method of separation of the mixture of substances by the differential movement on stationary phase with the help of mobile phase. What we do in this case is it is mainly used for those substances where what we find is that the impurities like in, when, when we are discussing it particularly in case of metallurgy, 
when the impurities in the metals are, are, are having almost a similar physical and chemical properties, we cannot use them, uh, use any one of these to separate them. We use this, it's very specific one property called adsorption. Now when the impurities in the metal are differs in their adsorption, definitely they will differ. They, basically they are separated by this technique which is called chromatography. Now chromatography can be of many types like column chromatography, thin layer chromatography, paper chromatography, gas chromatography, it can be of many types, but the one, ones which are mainly used are your column chromatographies. Now in, in case of this column chromatography, what we use is we use a silica gel, like, like buried sort of tube is taken, and in this, what is, what is this? Is silica gel is, is used, which is your is, is a stationary phase. Now when it is a stationary phase, it actually is like this. Now the, the impure metal is taken here and then some suitable solvent is added which is actually is a mobile phase. Now when the uh, solvent moves down, it takes the impure metal in the, in, along with it. Now the impure metal on the basis of its adsorption tendencies gets separated out and in the form of different layers, which by opening up this cock can easily be separated out separately. It is mainly used for your lanthanoids because all lanthanoids are having similar physical and chemical properties. So they all, and they exist together, it becomes very difficult to separate them. So chromatography is the best technique to uh, separate them, refine them.